The world's oldest travel firm, Thomas Cook, has collapsed. All Thomas Cook flights have been immediately cancelled. Thomas Cook, one of the world's biggest tour operators, has collapsed. Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook has collapsed. Welcome to Backpacking in Iraq, uh, Will, Ollie, um, I guess we're going to do this video, We've somehow gone to the Middle East, gone to Iraq, mm -hmm. survived and thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, um, so we want to share it with you and try and convince you all to go. Um, so in this video we're just going to be talking about our itinerary, what we kind of went through, uh, a bit of preparation, some of the questions you guys have asked, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, roll on from there. I guess the first thing to kind of go through would be, is it safe? Um, yeah, the important thing to remember is if you're coming here, that it's a relatively safe place. It's, it's, it's probably as safe as Turkey, I think. If you go to like central Turkey, it's the same sort of level. They've had pretty much during the Iraq war, they didn't have any violence up here. The worst thing that happened was in 2004 when they had pretty big bombing, but um, that happens all over the world. That's happened in London, that's happened in New York, that's happened everywhere. And to be honest, here is a lot safer than a lot of Western countries, if you look at... 100%, I, I said on my Instagram feed, I felt a lot safer in Erbil and uh, Duhok, um, a few cities in Kurdistan than I have in some streets in where I'm from in Devon. So we've been in Iraq for about two minutes. Um, we've broken the safe. I've got a massive blister on my foot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna go for a swim against... In can the... I shut the door? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've got the car. In the empty pool we've ever seen, there's no one in there. It's slightly interesting, isn't it? We didn't know what the dress I code I completely forgot. Yeah, exactly. I'm a bit unsure of what the etiquette is in Iraqi pools. Sweet. Um, so our initial plan was to be ultra safe and book a guide for the entire time we were here. Um, and a few but, up and everything. Yeah, exactly. And but numbers, we were messaging uh, them and all sorts. But when we got here, not only were we kind of like too late to book them out, which is, you know... Yeah, they all booked up for the month. Because there are so few, that's the main thing. Like the ones that are busy. there will get booked. They're up. busy. So if you are going to come here and you would like a guide, book book it months in advance. Mm. But also, we ended up. Well, what we ended up having is that we didn't get a guide at all, and we ended up backpacking the whole way, which is something I never thought I'd say. Backpacking yeah. for Iraq, and also it was incredibly easy. I mean, there were a few moments, as we'll get onto later, where it got a bit sketchy and a bit dodgy. Yeah. Um, but that made the trip all the better. And so I think some of the most memorable moments we had were probably when we were in those awkward yeah, times we're kind of like what the fuck is going on it's those but, moments that when um, when it's happening you hate it and then afterwards you've got a story 100 yeah, exactly. but it's it's just like that i mean yeah if, you, if you're a seasoned traveler it's, it's it's you're more than capable of backpacking through this place everything just works oh, out if, if you've been backpacking around you know asia and everything you'll be absolutely fine like i've only done vietnam and a bit of the far east i found it really easy i think yeah. it was easier well no not 
definitely got chicken here. Um, cool. So we'll get on to our kind of itinerary, what we kind of got up to, the, the tricks and the kind of weird situations we got ourselves in because I never experienced anything like uh, the hospitality, the culture, um, some of the landscapes were absolutely fabulous. Day, day, day two, we kind of explored Urbu, I guess. Um, the kind of, what is it, historical city? You probably know more about this than I do. We are in the Ara, Kurdish town of Urbu. And we are at the Urbu Citadel. All these continually inhabited structures on the earth, in the earth, on the earth, on the earth. Inhabited for 8,000 years. Citadel on the middle, which is basically sort of, if you come here, it's your reference point. It's where you want to head pretty much, it's where all the touristy stuff is. A lot of the suburbs, you know, there's interesting stuff. There's um, there's parks, there's Shanadar Park, Abdul Rahman. But the Citadel is where, you know, everything is, all the bazaars and all the stuff. So that's where I'd go. Yeah, it was pretty cool. They've got like massive water fountain features and things. It's yeah. it pretty just, if you want to get immersed in culture, Erbil is the hub of Iraq and kind of Kurdistan. It's just where everything is. It's where all the hustle and bustle is. It's the capital, you know. For all these like weird markets and stuff and like, Mm. There is still, like, what, one of the things that strike me about Iraq, actually, there is actually a lot of wealth. Like, the most common car is probably a Range Rover and Toyotas, which I found. I yeah, know, modern, modern. modern Toyotas and very modern Range Rovers. Like, it was all evoked. I, I, mean, I don't know what I was expecting, whether we I expecting it to be quite a poor country, considering what's been going mm. on here. But Kurdistan itself has been relatively untouched since yeah. the early 90s, really. And um, the, thing, the thing is, a lot of the people, when the war started in 2003, a lot of the very rich people from Baghdad and Basra and um, I guess Mosul later on, moved here. So they brought all their wealth here. So a lot of the food and stuff you see here, a lot of the nice cars, a lot of the wealth, is because one, it was untouched by the war, and two, all the wealthy people got out of Baghdad and came up here. What's actually struck me is that yeah. when people said we're going to Iraq, you know, it's a bit of trepidation, but as I said to you about breakfast, they're just normal people going about their normal lives. It's so normal, That's, it's, it's so normal. You're in but it just takes city. one fucking idiot to give them oh, a bad nice. name, and it's really, it's really terrible. But it's a, you know, it's buzzing your culture. No, but a few little kids slap me and follow us around yeah, trying to sell stuff. was assaulted. Pretty violent. <laughs> <laughs> pretty violent. <laughs> then what was weird is that when we were walking from the hotel to the city centre, we saw like a load of um, Kurdistan flags and a load of like. What looked like vets. Ve veterans, yeah. And then we got into the city center, and you'll probably see a clip of this. Um, mm. is the Peshmerga or the Kurdistan army having like some sort of military parade? And before you knew it, we were just walking across the road and we we're involved in this massive yeah. celebration with rifles, so Kalashnikovs. It was Kurdish, weird. The Kurdish uh veterans looked about sort of in their late 60s, early yeah, 70s, yeah. they were old. But, um, it's a pretty cool thing to see. It was it was apparently the, anver the anniversary of an independence referendum they had a few years ago. I think it was maybe ten years ago. But um, yeah, they were celebrating that. So Kurdish flags. It was like um, oh, it's Fourth of July in America, <laughs> except I don't know. Pretty much the same. It? The well, flag. Yeah, I guess it was weird. It was like a truck with a keyboard and like a drum on it. And yeah, like, it was it. And we just it was sat and just having a coffee. But it was, we had no idea that was going on. It was nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. Be. Could be like a revolution for all we knew at the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a weird one. We are in the biggest park in Erbil. It's, uh, what's it called? Sami Abdul Rahman Park. Uh, and there's not a single other human being in it. He's going on a bike behind us. It's there's there's everything. There's boats. There's lakes. There's pedalos. There's kiosks. Restaurants. All abandoned. What was weird is that the military guys had to check our bags before we walked in. But yeah, like, no, even if we wanted to shoot someone, there's no one here to shoot. Yeah, we would literally just have to kill each other <laughs> and like frame that as a like Hunger Games kind of thing. But yeah. Um, so we planned to go up to a place called Rwanda's, uh, just outside the big city of Saran, mm -hmm. which is kind of northeast-ish. Mountain towns, yeah. Yes. Um, so Rwanda's. Why would you go there? It's kind of like full of canyons. It's kind of like the Middle East version of the Grand Canyon, I guess, yeah. in, in little parts. Just like a um, it's just a town to be near to the canyons, basically. Yeah, exactly. And there's a, exactly. There's a few cool little um, waterfalls and little uh, kind of nature spots around yeah, there. Yeah. So, in fact, Na National Geographic were there a week or two weeks before we were there. Yeah. Um, so, if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, it's a cool place to check out and go to. Mm -hmm. However, we had no idea how to get there. As, as we said earlier, we didn't get a guide or anything, so we were kind mm -hmm. of a bit we, uh, absolutely. in the blue. So, we kind of asked our hotel. Um, how, we, how, we, how, how to get to um, Rwanda's and they said they were going to book a taxi and we're like oh sweet this is going to be easy yeah, and then all the way there from the hotel exactly and then they said what did he say oh it's $125 and we're like 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit too much. We're on a bit of a budget. Um, but luckily the day before we were kind of like wandering around what was it we bumped into we found a shop that said tourism in fact you'll see lots of shops in there but yeah, say we, tourism we, just went, we went in two different touristy shops like Turkish Airlines places and we just said how do you get there and they both said um, go to the Erbil International Terminal so we got to the Erbil uh, International General Terminal I don't know why it's international I think they go up to Turkey maybe it's really dead posh I, I was expecting like a massive like a, um, rut of people all swarming each other, but it's actually this is like it's like an airport. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. nice. If you ever want to go to different towns in from a bill, if you're ever travelling here, like super easy. So, uh, get a taxi here. We're now it? officially backpacking through Iraq, and then we're like, well, what's this terminal going to be? And I've been to terminals in other countries, oh, yeah. and it's an absolute beehive. Like it's a mess. It's like a balling. Like it's a building. Yeah, exactly. It's a market. The buildings falling apart. There's coaches and vans everywhere. This place was like a brand new airport. There was no one there. Yeah, we really walked lovely. through, got, went to the back of it. We had no idea what to expect. Um, there were loads of different cars, and eventually we just walked over this random direction. Just really kept, easy. We just kept saying Rwandas. Within 30 seconds, this guy's like, yep. Go Rwandas. 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 Rwandas over there. Look, look. as well. Okay. Rwanda? Rwanda, sure. Okay. You know how much? <laughs> What's weird is that our hotel quoted us $125 to get to where we want to go to, and we've managed to absolutely wing it at this weird car place mm. for $5 each. It's like the local option, there's no tourists here. I think from hotels, like they just, they kind of, they can kind of cheat. They can cheat you out of your money. I really need a haircut. Yeah. I'm going to get some Kurdish car. Yeah, I need a, oh, I need a face transplant. <laughs> I've been saying that for years, but yeah, I mean, because of the tan. They built to some random street. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure we were sort of getting set up to be kidnapped, but yeah, that was a bit of a worry moment. We were in Iraq two days, and we were, yeah, in, some, the... we were in some back alley in some random loose car. I think we're picking up his mum or something. Mm -hmm. He's got the boot open. Anyway, he, we naively got in this car, I guess, and. I'm not sure, we're, we're picking, still in Erbil and he's just... I reckon he's just picking someone up and he's just going to drop him off on the way or something. I don't know. I hope so. There was a tiny, tiny proportion of me who thought oh, we'd yeah. get a bullet in the back of the head. But... If that had happened later in the trip, we wouldn't have minded because we were used to it. But it was our second day in Iraq and we're down some alleyway and he, this guy can't communicate to us what he's doing. But then two Iranian women, I think a mother and a daughter probably, oh, came out of the that, house. That ride. So um, yeah, the ride up to Rwanda was almost three hours, I think. And um, yeah, Ollie had to sit next to. <laughs> I was sitting between this old Iranian woman and you, and you're not yeah. the smallest politely, the smallest you're not the smallest guy. guy. Squished in the middle, and yeah. in those cars on the Toyota, like yeah, the, the old seat. Corollas or whatever they are. It was a Corolla, yeah. yeah. The little metal bar that goes up, so I had a metal bar up my ass for three hours. Not rocking. Well, well. Rocking, <laughs> rocking side to side, squishing this old Iranian lady. Yeah. It was quite funny in retrospect, but it was quite uncomfortable. The funny thing is, Ollie. You're like what six foot three ish, yeah. yeah and you, you're a big guy. And this this Iranian lady was absolutely tiny. She was like five foot two. And she was adamant she was getting the size. She was like, no, she had a huge seat. So like, if anyone should have gone in the middle, it should have been should have been her. But I don't think we could have made her do that. We way. could not yeah. made her do that. We would have crushed her. Yeah, but, quite um, funny. We said about the language barrier, the international language of football works wonders. Oh, yeah, we have people, it, you could be in the middle of the desert and meet a guy who's maybe seen one English person or one white person in his life, and you say David Beckham, Harry Kane, Wayne Rooney, he'll and he'll yeah. instantly kind of like, oh, Manchester or Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Or it's Arsenal. actually crazy. I think that, uh, that helps you kind of establish a kind of yeah. mutual respect for each other. Um, um, it's just cool. it's weird, isn't it? There's, some things, there's some things that are just internationally funny. Like if you draw a cock in the sand or you yeah. fart, it's just internationally funny. Everywhere. It just works. It, trans <laughs> it just transcends, works. transcends language, ethnic barriers, religious barriers. You just, you just fart. Yeah. And they'll be, they'll be like, oh, <laughs> fart sweet, in public. Sweet. And they'll be like, that yeah. guy, he's got balls. Especially in the Middle East, I think, it's actually fine. Or maybe it's that bourbon. <laughs> because we did it all wrong. Do both at once and they'll fuck they'll love you. They'll be like, this guy, Instantly this guy. shit yourself and they'll have... Absolutely. Well, nothing but respect for you. No, don't shit yourself and they'll, they'll love that. That's so respectful. <laughs> anyway, we didn't actually make it to Rwanda. So we made it 
We got dropped off um, at Porik Mountain, which is, I think is the highest mountain in Kurdistan. Oh, it's, it's yeah. definitely up there. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, so we got dropped off outside. You have to get a cable car to go up there. This place is actually a ski resort. Um, mm. And they actually get a lot of, more snow there than they do anywhere in the UK, um, mm. which is sort of surprised me. Yeah. Um, and then opposite... <laughs> opposite this, this is our first cable. mistake. Our yeah. first mistake. <laughs> was, I, it was my mistake, I'll own it completely, but I saw there was a motel <laughs> next to the correct cable car bit. So you can just stay at the motel. What, we, this is what I thought. You can just stay at the motel, and then go up to correct, experience all the stuff they got there, and then just come back down and stay at your motel. Well, no, we forgot something. We were pretty tired, because we'll, well, we'll get on to what we've done. So we went down to Beckle, Beckle Waterfalls, uh, which is a beautiful waterfall in the canyon. Um, yeah. And there's like, what's weird is that like half the little, it's basically a little village is kind of like in the water. So there's like shops and market mm. stores in the water. It's cool. It's so like you, a little, you little... Yeah, you've got to have a little paddle to like get anywhere, which is awesome. Uh, I've not seen anything quite like it. And even like we had a little drink uh, and, and an ice cream at the top of the waterfall and you're in the waterfall. It's really cool. Well, we managed to hitch a lift. We hitched a lift back. Oh, from yeah. A shop worker closed up his like sunglasses stand <laughs> shop thing. No, he had like a little, yeah, it was it ice cream, drinks, just a one of these shops that sells oh, everything. There's a cow out there. It's a cow. It's a couple of cows. Um, so it's probably about 37 degrees or something, isn't it? It's pretty damn hot. Pretty damn hot. I thought it would feel a lot cooler in the mountains, but no. No, it's, it's not. Hotter. It's probably hotter here than it was in Herbal. But anyway, this lovely gentleman just decided to give us a lift up the hill. But to do it, he closed his own shop, which is yeah, rather so I, I feel kind of bad. At the top of the mountain, there's, it, it's a ski resort, essentially. So they've got like, a few shops and things. Really nice restaurant I recommend going to. Oh, sweet. It's it was, such a nice restaurant. It's really cool. And then uh, what else we do? That? Oh, yeah, there's that toboggan thing, which is really weird. There's a do I used to call it a donut, but it's the, the circular inflatable things that you go down ski slopes in. So we did that. They call it a tubby, but what do we call it? Donuts. Donuts. donuts in, uh, but... in a mountain resort in Iraq. <laughs> And then that's when it got a bit awkward because we went back to our motel. We were pretty tired, had a long day, um, had a pretty early night. And then like 11 o'clock, I just hearing like knocking. Yeah. But he's no, you, because I was, I slept on the sofa, you slept in the bed. And uh, well, so I, 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 I say yeah. slept, I mean, kind of Stay away went in and out of consciousness. But then this guy's just knocking, he wasn't not even knocking on our door, he was knocking on the door next to it. He obviously didn't know where we were. And there was two guys there eventually knocked on our door, opened the door, and we demanded money. Historical importance, this place. And if you want to be woken up at 11 o'clock at night and have people demand money from you, this is the place to stay. This is the place they are, they are really about waking up late at night and asking you for money. $50 as well. Because that really doesn't coincide with the quality of the hotel. We kind of just assumed they were robbing us. But no, it's actually £50 per night for the hotel. Yeah, $50 as well, which is... Yeah, so it was much. A, it was a lot for what it was. Yeah, like it, you would have thought the one thing that would have been good about it is the price. And it was like, no, $50 now. That's why we think that we, they didn't work there, because where oh, the hell no. did they pull that, that amount yeah. out of? It, it, no Wi Fi, like cold shower, um, one bed, and like a sofa, and like nothing else. The towel was like, $50 a night. Like, what are you on? So we're, we're fucking off now. We're going we're gonna to get a taxi somewhere else. Even though it's like 9.30am. Uh, our bags fucked off in another taxi somewhere else. So now, luckily Will's got his passport and some money. I've got fuck all.